Hello physicists, hope you're all well. It's really difficult talking enthusiastically to a camera. Um, welcome to this series of videos. We're going to look at all the different derivations that are in the A-level specification for A-level AQA physics, starting with this one here. Uh, this is proving Kepler's third law using Newton's understanding of gravity. Um, now the actual equation that you need, or set of equations, is there. There it is, you can pause it, you can write it down, that's all you really need to know for the exam. Uh, but I'm going to talk you through what it actually all means uh, in the rest of the video. So here's the idea. Um, Kepler's third law states that r cubed over t squared is the same for everything orbiting the sun. Um, or in actual fact it says that r cubed over t squared is the same for all objects orbiting a certain body, but let's go for the sun as a good example. If you take r cubed over t squared for anything going around the sun, it's the same. So r is the radius of orbit and t is the time period taken. So if you take the cube of the radius of orbit for the earth and divide it by the square of the time taken to go around the sun for us, which is one year of course, um, you will find it's the same number as if you do the same for Mars or the same for Jupiter, or other planets, you've heard of other planets, you know what they're like. R cubed over C squared is the same for all of them, but why? It naturally comes out of the idea that the centripetal acceleration that is making these bodies go round is caused by gravity. And that's this first equation, and if you rearrange it, you end up with that. Why is this a big deal? Well, this part here, this is Newton's understanding of the acceleration due to gravity. You might recognise it as the expression for little g. Uh, little g being the expression for gravitational acceleration. gm over r squared. This bit here is the expression for centripetal acceleration. And Newton said gravity is the force that is keeping these things going around. So the gravitational acceleration has got to be equal to the acceleration uh, the centripetal acceleration of these objects as they go around in a circle. Uh, he then did a bit of rearranging, he came up with this, what did he do? Well first of all let's make sure that we know what these terms are. Uh, capital G is the constant of gravitation, uni Newton's universal constant of gravitation. It's about 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11 Newton square meters per square kilogram. M is the mass of the object that we're orbiting r is the radius of the orbit and v is the uh, velocity, not the um, not the angular velocity, just the regular distance over time kind of velocity. Uh, and that's what we've got here. We've got distance, which is 2 pi r, the circumference of the orbit, divided by capital T, the time period of the orbit. That's how that one works. So what we're going to do now is just uh, substitute that in, do a bit of rearranging and end up with this, and everything is going to be wonderful. So this 2 pi r over t is going to go in there. Before we do that, you might have noticed, um, I've instead of got having an r squared down here, I've got an r down here. Basically all I've done is I've noticed that this is divided by r squared and this is divided by r, so I've just got rid of an r on both sides. Uh, and then the second thing I've done is instead of having a v squared, I've actually substituted in this 2 pi r over t and squared all that. So instead of having v squared, I've got 2 pi r all squared over t squared. So there's our next line. Uh, now what I need to do is expand this out. 2 pi r all squared is going to be 4 pi squared r squared. So we end up with gm over r is 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. And finally, we can do a little bit of rearranging to end up just by multiplying both sides by r. I'll end up with r cubed over t squared is equal to gm, divide it down, over 4 pi squared, which is this equation here. Now this proves that Kepler's third law mathematically has to be correct if it's gravity that keeps the objects orbiting the sun. The reason for that is that this shows that r cubed over t squared has got to be equal to gm over 4 pi squared. Most of those are just constants, in fact all but one a constant. So this uh, this capital G, that's that Newton's constant of gravity. 4 and pi are just numbers. So all it's saying is that r cubed of t squared depends on one thing and one thing only. It only depends on the mass of the object you're going around. So if you go around the sun, for example, um, you know, all the planets going around the sun will all have the same value of g over 4 pi squared because they're all going around the 
object, which is the sun, um, and it will be the same mass of the sun for each object going round the sun. That's how that works. Uh, you could put the numbers in if you want. The mass of the sun is 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Uh, you know what g and 4 and pi and little squared thing are. It will just give you a, a, just a number. So all objects going around the sun will have a certain number that their r cubed over t squared will have to be. Uh, and that shows why Kepler's law has to be correct. Uh, and there you are. There's that first derivation all sorted. Easy peasy. Really wish I